talk in a circus where there are always thrills, action, and danger. Hundreds of dramatic behind-the-scenes adventures are all part of the Clyde Beatty story. Here is the story of Kodiak Killer. A couple of years ago, my wife Harriet and I spent the off-season in El Monte, California, close by our circus winter quarters. The thousand and one details that must be attended to for the next season kept us busy, with all signs pointing toward a big year. One night, with the spring opening still a month away, Harriet and I were relaxing in the living room of our home. Did you like the new costumes for the equestrian number, Clyde? Clyde? Hmm? Oh, come again? Clyde, can't you take your eyes off Gretchen for a moment and pay some attention to me? Sorry, honey, but Gretchen's my baby. <laughs> well, she's mine, too. But that's no reason for neglecting me and spoiling her. Well, you sound jealous. After mm-hmm. all, it was your idea to adopt her when her mother died last year. I know. And I'm not really jealous, dear. Oh, by the way, she hardly touched her dinner tonight. Hmm, that's funny. Last night she ate ten pounds of raw meat and begged for more. That was last night. I don't think she's feeling well tonight. Now, how about it, Gretch, baby? Aren't you feeling sharp? <laughs> <laughs> you see, she's feeling fine. My error, dear. <laughs> and while we're on the subject, don't you think we'd better cage her soon? Mrs. Murray dropped in the other day, and Gretchen scared her half to death. Oh, Mrs. Murray's scared of her own shadow. That may be. But some people just don't appreciate a hundred pounds of lion cub charging at them, even in fun. I guess you're right. She is getting pretty big. Oh, I'll get it, honey. Okay. Telegram for Mr. Beatty. You Mr. Beatty? That's right. Well, sign here, please. Okay. There you are. Wait a second, now. Gretchen, Gretchen, come here. What the? Hey, let me out of here. Back, Gretchen, back. Hey, hey, come back, boy. Your tip. Forget it, mister. <laughs> you bad baby. See what you did scaring that poor boy? It looks like Mrs. Murray is not alone. Oh, what's the telegram, Clyde? Let's see. Hmm. From Anchorage, Alaska. Oh, from one of your Eskimo fans, no doubt. Mm, bad guess, honey. It's from Ken Gordon. Oh, from Ken. And what does the Matanuska Valley farmer have to say? Remember the letter I got a few days ago from Ken, the one telling about the Kodiak bear that's gone on the rampage in that territory? Oh, yes, I remember you mentioning something about it. Well, that bear is still at it, killing livestock, and it's killed a man now, too. Well, why don't they shoot it? Harriet, have you ever seen a Kodiak bear? No, I guess not. Neither have I, except in a museum. But the one I saw there stood over ten feet high, and they're just as tough as they are big. Guess they've got a real problem up there. Yeah, and it's our problem, too, honey. Our problem? What do you mean by that? Well, don't forget that we own a half interest in Ken's farm. Didn't we give him the money to get started, huh? Well, yes, but... Well, we can't afford to let a bear wreck the whole works, can we? It's already killed several head of dairy cattle. Clyde, you're not suggesting... We could fly up in our own plane and be back in a week or so. But, Clyde... Get out your snowshoes, Mrs. Beatty. We're going to Alaska. Harriet received a telegram from a friend in Alaska telling of a giant Kodiak bear on the rampage in the Matanuska Valley. Clyde has decided to fly to Alaska in an attempt to kill the bear. And early the following morning is explaining his plans to his lot superintendent at winter quarters. We'll be back in a week or ten days, Bob. That is, if we're lucky. Clyde, have you flipped your lid completely? You can't chase off to Alaska at a time like this. We open in four weeks. I know, I know, but things are pretty well under control and here. Still... We'll never be missed for a few days. But, Clyde, Think you... what an opportunity this is, Bob. I know, but... I can you... do the farmers up in that valley a big favor and at the same time bag myself a Kodiak bear. Sure, there. but you... And it'll give Harriet and me a change of scenery and a chance to see Ken Gordon. Yeah. And find out how our investment's coming along. That's great, You wouldn't want me to let a friend down, now, would you, Bob? Frankly, Clyde, Of course I... you wouldn't. So you see, we're agreed. Harriet and I are taking off in an hour. Be back before you know it. Oh, yes, Clyde. Why, Bob, 
You don't sound convinced. I just can't help feeling that it's crazy, Clyde. You've got a circus to think about, you know. And I'll still have it a week or ten days from now. That's not the point. Huh? The point is, will the circus still have you? <laughs> You're worrying about my safe return? Well, tangling with a Kodiak bear isn't exactly my idea of a parlor game. Well, think of it this way, Bob. Suppose you owned a farm and a giant bear started killing off your stock and endangering people's lives. What would you do? I'd move to the city, but fast. <laughs> I know what you mean. But that's not the answer for the people up there. Uh, well, I can see there's no use arguing. Go ahead, go to Alaska, shoot yourself a bear. You have my blessing. Atta boy, Bob. I know you'd see it my way. <laughs> Harriet and I hopped to Seattle that evening where we spent the night. Then next morning, we were up bright and early and pushed off on the next leg of our long flight. We landed at Juneau for fuel and some lunch, and by mid-afternoon, we're within a couple of hours of Anchorage. Are you sure Ken will be there to meet us, Clyde? Oh, he'd better be. I sent him a telegram that we'd arrive at Anchorage before dark. Here, honey, you want to take the controls a minute while I look at the map? All right. Where are we now? Oh, let's see... You see that mountain peak off to our right? Uh-huh. That's Mount Williams. We're right on the course. I'd better make a position report while I'm at it. Why is the microphone? Oh, thanks. Anchorage radio from NC-748. Anchorage radio from NC-748. Go ahead, Anchorage. NC-748, this is Anchorage radio. You are loud and clear. Go ahead. Anchorage from NC-748. Routine position report, 10 miles west of Mount Williams, altitude 6,000, ground speed 155, estimating anchorage at 1745. Go ahead. Roger, NC-748, your position 10 miles west of Mount Williams, 6,000 feet, ETA, anchorage 1745. Anchorage weather at 1520 was ceiling and visibility unlimited, temperature 38, 2.34, wind, west-northwest 17. Please call Anchorage Tower 120 miles out. Anchorage Radio. Well, that'll keep the CAA happy for a while. And I'll be happy when we get there. This is turning out to be a longer flight than I expected. Anchorage Tower from NC-748. Go ahead. NC-748 from Anchorage Tower. Go ahead. Our position now 20 miles southeast at 4,000. Descending. Request landing instructions. Go ahead. Roger. 748. You are cleared to land. Wind is west, northwest, 10. Altimeter setting 2994. Light snow flurry is just east of the field. Advise caution. Go ahead. Roger. Anchorage Tower. NC 748 out. Well... Here we are, honey. Oh, thank goodness. I'm about whipped. A nice soft bed will feel good to me, too. I just hope Ken doesn't want to stay up and gab all night. Well, if he does, you're on your own. I'm going to bed the minute we get to his place. Supposing his wife, Jane, wants to hear the latest gossip from the state. She'll just have to wait until morning. Well, that's fair enough. But we've still got a 50-mile ride over some rough roads ahead of us. And if Ken's still got that beat-up old clunker he had last time I was up there, it won't be a joyride. By golly, Clyde, am I glad you come. I was afraid maybe I hadn't made my telegram strong enough. Oh, it sounded plenty strong to me. That must be some bear. Is he still causing trouble, Ken? Nothing but trouble, Harriet. You know, this is a strange situation up here. We've had an early spring. All the animals that have been hibernating during the winter are up and around again. Now we're due for some more cold weather, and they're all caught short for food. Well, this Kodiak's wandered pretty far from home base, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, they don't usually get over this far east. At least not since the valley's been settled like it is now. Are there many other farmers in the Matanuska Valley? Yeah, quite a few. You know, the government's made a lot of the valley available to homesteaders lately. Several ex-GIs have settled around here. Getting back to the bear, Ken, hasn't anyone tried to hunt it down? Well, a couple have tried it, but I don't think their hearts are exactly in it. 
That's the most bear I ever hope to see, let me tell you. Well, then you've actually seen it. Yeah. Just the other day, he killed two more head of our dairy cattle. I saw him hightailing it for the woods right after it. He must be half-starved to come that close to where people live, Ken. Yeah, he's still trying to catch up after hibernating. But it's more than just that. He's a natural killer. Gone kill crazy, I guess. I tried to follow him the other day myself, but he soon lost me. Shouldn't be so hard now. Looks as if it's been thawing some today. Well, that'll help, all right. But he's a smart one, Clyde. <laughs> It'll take some doing to get him. I uh, thought we might see if Joe Dunbar wants to join us. He lives just a couple of miles from my place. Fine. Can he handle a rifle? Well, he ought to be able to. He was in the infantry during the war. He should be a welcome addition, then. Well, if you're game, we'll get up early and go after him first thing in the morning. <laughs> How are you doing, Ken? How yeah, about set, I guess. Uh, maybe we'd better pack these snowshoes along just in case. The weather looks pretty grim. It's not a bad idea. I'm not too sure how good this ammunition of mine is. Um, how about loaning me a few rounds of the stuff you brought? Sure thing. It's fresh out of the factory and the latest in the hollow point. Well, that rifle of yours looks all right, too. I think it'll do the trick. You fellas don't even believe in letting your breakfast settle, do you? <laughs> not today, Harriet. We're on our way. Is Jane in the kitchen? Mm Mm-hmm. Just finishing the dishes, Ken. Well, I'll duck in and say goodbye to her. Uh, we might not be back for two or three days, honey, but that'll give you gals a good chance to visit. Oh, I'll enjoy talking to Jane, but I wish I were going with you. In a way, I do, too, but I think it's better this way. We're just going to take Dunbar along if he'll go. I'd be happier if the whole National Guard went with you. (laughs) That's an idea. You will be careful, won't you, Clyde? Why, of course, honey. Hey, what's the matter? Nothing, Clyde. Nothing. Well, let's get going, Clyde. What do you say? I say, what are we waiting for? Come on. You like Joe Dunbar, Clyde. He's one of the best. I'm anxious to meet him. Hi, Mary. Hi there, you guys. Come in, come in, Ken. You can't quiet down now. Mary, this is Clyde Beatty. Hello, Mr. Beatty. How are you, Mrs. Dunbar? Just fine, thanks. Ken's told us so much about you. It seems like we've already met almost. I've always said Ken talks too much. (laughs) Well, we're not here to talk now. We're going after that Kodiak, Mary. Thought maybe Joe might like to come along. You're about an hour late, Ken. Joe's already on the warpath with that brown devil. What? Was here early this morning. Killed Joe's saddle horse. And he went right after it? He sure did. Mm. I've never seen Joe so mad. He grabbed his carbine and tore right out. Said he wasn't coming back until that killer was dead. Mm, well, maybe we can catch up to him. He went off into the woods, just just to the east. Ah, uh, well, we shouldn't have too much trouble following the tracks in the soft ground. Mrs. Dunbar, did I understand you to say he took a carbine? That's right. Why? Uh, nothing. Shall we go, Ken? Yeah. Uh, how about letting us take Yukon, Mary? You might be helping trailing Joe and that bear. Sure, take him along. Uh. He's done nothing but yap and whine ever since Joe left anyway. <laughs> okay. Come on, you come. Hey, come on. Let's go find the boss. Good luck. Thanks, Mrs. Dunbar. Yeah, bye, Mary. We'll see you later. Bye. Goodbye, Mr. Beatty. Come on, Ken. We gotta hurry. Huh? What's the matter? Don't you see? Dunbar's gone after a Kodiak bear with a carbine. He might as well be armed with a slingshot. Hey, that's right. I hadn't thought of that. If he catches up to that killer before we catch him, he won't stand a chance. <laughs> And now, back to Clyde Beatty and his story, Kodiak Killer. Clyde Beatty and Ken Gordon are after a giant Kodiak bear that has been marauding in the Matanuska Valley of Alaska. They stopped at the house of a neighboring farmer to enlist his help, only to find that he had left an hour earlier in pursuit of the killer and armed with only a carbine. Uh, Can you still see the tracks, Clyde? Yeah. These bear tracks are easy enough to follow. They're the biggest I've ever seen. Oh, he's a monster, all right. Ah, we must be seven or eight miles into the woods by now. I thought we'd catch up by this time. Your friend Dunbar is no slouch when it comes to trailing. Uh, He's a good man. Uh, Weather's turning pretty bitter. We might get some snow out of this. Won't make our job any easier, I'm afraid. It's a lucky thing we brought Dunbar's dog along. Seems to have a good nose on him. Oh, I don't think a bloodhound could do much better than Yukon. (laughs) Joe takes him hunting all the time. Wonder why he didn't take him along this time. Probably didn't want to risk his getting chewed up. 
What time you got, Ken? Uh, almost one o'clock. <laughs> hey, listen to you, Con. Yeah. Come on, he just went around that clump of brush there. He, he must have spotted something. I hope it's your friend. Clyde, look, lying on the ground there. I see him. Is it Dunbar? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Uh, looks like we're too late. He's been badly clawed. Yeah, poor guy. How is he? Hmm. Still breathing, Ken. But I don't know how long he'll last. We gotta get him to some shelter. Yeah, but it's... Oh, wait a minute. We can't be more than a couple of miles from old Walt White's cabin. It's near the river to the north. Walt White? Yeah, he's an old sourdough prospector. Well, that's our best bet, then. We'll make a litter of some branches to carry him on. Yeah, what's the matter? Ken, look over there. Do you see what I see? Why, three empty cartridge cases. Yeah, from his carbine. And look here. Blood. A trail of blood. Dunbar wounded that bear, Ken. He'll be twice as mean now. All right. Well... We better get a move on here. Right. If we can get him to that cabin, maybe White can go into Parker for a doctor. Yeah, he must be home all right, Clyde. Smoke coming up from the chimney. That's a break, anyway. Hey, where'd Yukon go? He's right back of me. Well, seems to know his master's in bad shape. All right, here we are. Easy now. Yeah. Uh, that'll do it. Uh, I sure hope he's here. Well, Ken Gordon, come in. Thanks, White. All right, Clyde, let me up. Move him in up. Hey, what's happened to this fella? He was attacked by that Kodiak bear that's been on the rampage over in the valley. Holy smoke. Oh, that bear done a thorough job on him. Uh, just take him right over and put him on the bunk there. All right. There. Easy now. Uh, it's lucky we weren't any further from Shelby. Yeah. Oh, White, this is Clyde Beatty, a friend of mine. Uh, how are you, Beatty? All right, thanks. Mr. White, uh, Ken tells me there's a doctor over at Parker. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we won't be able to move Dunbar any further, White. Could you go for the doc and get him back here? Why, yeah, I reckon so. Uh, let me have a look at him. Yeah, I'd go for the doc myself, only I'm not too familiar with how to get to Parker from here. Uh, it ain't easy if you don't know how. He's got to have help as soon as possible. Uh, I'm a... Uh... Afraid it's too late, men. Ain't nobody can help him now. What? He's dead. Poor devil. I was afraid he couldn't last long. I'm surprised he lived five minutes after what that bear done to him. Well, we can't do anything now, Ken. We might as well get back to the trail. Yeah, I guess so. Wait a minute. You fellas ain't going out after that wounded Kodiak, are you? We sure are. But his I... wounds should slow him down and give us a better chance to catch up. Well, sure, but then what? Then it's up to us to put an end to him. Well, I suppose you know what you're doing, but... If it was me, I'd leave him go. Somebody's got to kill him sometime, White. It may as well be us. Well, I'll take Dunbar into Parker if you want. Uh, anything else I can do? Just see that his wife gets word, White. And tell her we won't stop until that bear's dead. All right. Hate to see you going out, though. You're liable to get caught in the dangest spring snowstorm you've ever seen. I, I can feel it. We'll just have to take our chances. Ready, Ken? Let's go. <laughs> Clyde, the ground's freezing. I can't see the trail anymore. Just follow Yukon. He's still able to follow the scent. Uh, old man White knows his weather. It's starting to snow a little. Yeah, I've noticed. Yeah, we're sunk. If it keeps up, it gets much worse before we catch up to the bear. Clyde. I know it. That's why we got to keep hurrying. I'm counting on that bear, trying to find shelter and holding up for the night. Speaking of night, it'll be dark in less than an hour. We're a long way from home, pal. Looks like we camp out tonight, bear or no bear. Hey, look. Yukon's rearing to the right at the river ahead. I see. Will the bear try to cross it, do you think? I doubt it. He'll probably go along parallel to the river for a while at least. Hey, look where Yukon's going now. Looks like a cave in the bank above the river there. That's just what it is. You better call him back, Ken. That's probably where our Kodiaks decided to spend the night. Hey, Yukon! Hey, Yukon! Oh, he's coming. Come on back here, Yukon! Yeah. Now, what do we do now, Clyde? It's practically dark. We'll have to find some shelter and make camp. Yeah, but what about the bear? Don't worry. He'll stay there till morning. We sure can't go in there after him now. I'm glad you said that, Clyde. Uh, I see an overhanging ledge of the bank on down a little way. I think with a fire in front, we can keep warm enough. And in the morning, we'll smoke that Kodiak out into the open. Oh, 
Bruce, looks like we're in for a long, cold night, Clyde. Think we got enough driftwood? Yeah, I think that ought to do it. Brother, it's really snowing now. I just hope it stops before dawn. Mm-hmm. Sounds like we've got company. Yeah, Timberwolf, huh? Yeah, nothing to worry about, I guess. Oh, it's all right, you got It's all right, boy. It's okay. Well, you better try to get a little shut-eye, Ken. I'll keep the fire going and wake you up in a couple of hours. Oh, gosh, that's the best idea I've heard all day. Oh, I bushed. There's no reason for me to be first. I'll match you for it. No, you go ahead. I'm not sleeping. <laughs> okay. But don't forget to punch me when you get that way. All right. What time does the sun come up this time of year? Oh, it'll be getting light along about five. Why? Nothing. Just anxious. Go to sleep, Ken. Uh, I'll rouse you in a little while. Ken. Ken. Rise and shine, Buster. Uh, uh, uh. Wake up, Ken. Oh. Oh, Clyde. <laughs> yeah, okay. Hey, hey, what time is it? It's getting light in the east. Time you were up and around. Oh, I thought you were going to rouse me and get some sleep yourself. Oh, never mind that. We got work to do. Yeah, it stopped snowing at least. That's something. Yeah, there's about a six-inch blanket all over everything. Mm. Good thing we brought the snowshoes. Maybe drifted pretty badly in some places. You haven't seen any signs of the bear this morning, have you? He's still in the cave, but he probably won't stay in there long. Come on. Okay. Where? Where's Yukon? Over there at the mouth of the cave. Oh. We went over to take a look just before I woke you up. Yukon's going crazy in front of the opening. Well, I hope he isn't crazy enough to go inside. He won't. You all set? Yep. Yeah, as soon as I get this one fastened. There, let's go. Okay. Uh, you think we'll have to build a fire and smoke him out? I don't know. Maybe... But he might make a break for it any minute, especially with Yukon barking like that. Uh, you know, Clyde, up to this moment, it hasn't been too bad. But I'm beginning to lose a little of my enthusiasm for this business now. Relax, Ken. It'll all be over in a flash. That's for sure, one way or another. Hold it. This is close enough for now. It's too close, if you ask me. Listen. Did you hear that? I'll say I heard it. He's coming out. Look at the size of it. Yukon, come back here. He's seen us, Ken. The bolt on my rifle's frozen. He's charging. Ken, get back. Clyde, shoot! He's still coming. Clyde! Oh, thank heaven. Oh, golly, I... I thought we were both goners, Clyde. That, my friend, is exactly what I was thinking. He was one tough customer. Oh, it's all right, Yukon. He can't bother us now. Oh, brother, that was as close as I ever want to come. I never saw anything like it. I'm sure I was hitting him with every shot, and he just kept coming on. Hey, look here, Clyde. Look. You were hitting him, all right. Five shots that I could cover with my hand, and every one of them through the heart. Yeah. Well, our job's done, I guess. Let's get back to civilization. I'm hungry. <laughs> Jack, should you keep on frying them? <laughs> no more for me, honey. Oh, I think this will do for the time being, Harriet. Uh, by the way, now that our trouble's been taken care of, what would you folks like to do? What is there to do? Well, uh, I'm afraid we, could... we won't be able to hang around long, Ken. If we don't get back soon, Bob will blow his top for sure. Oh, I was hoping he could stay a few days and just have fun. Clyde's right, Ken. We must get back. Well, hate to see you go, but I guess you know best. <laughs> if we're ever bothered by another Kodiak bear, though, I'll know who to call. Wait a minute. Now, don't be looking at me, pal. <laughs> well, why not? You solved this problem, didn't you? Sure, but there's a much simpler solution, Ken. One that Bob suggested just before we left. Oh, yeah? What is it? Ken, old boy, if you're ever bothered by another bear, simply move to the city. <laughs> <laughs> Clyde Beatty will return with a preview of our next adventure in just a moment. Once more, here is the star of our show, Clyde Beatty. Africa has long been known as the Dark Continent. 
But I often wonder if South America isn't equally deserving of that title. At any rate, when Harriet and I were stranded in the vast jungles of northern Brazil, things never looked darker. You'll know why when you hear our next story, Amazon Adventure. All stories are based upon incidents in the career of the world-famous Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show is produced by Shirley Thomas. Kodiak Killer was written by Robert T. Smith and Frank Hart Fawcett. All names used were fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production. Commodore production.